Ramble. Thank you to DoorDash for sponsoring today's episode. Kiki! Do you love me? Are you riding? I was the whole time thinking, like, let's have a Kiki, and I was hoping that someone would accidentally fall into that statement. Oh. Uh, welcome to Guilty Pleasures. Woo! Happy Halloween. Woo. I, I hope there's a chill in the air. <laughs> I hope you're feeling appropriately spooky or spoopy or mm. stepping on some crunchy leaves. Ooh. And, and this is exciting. We're doing like a, a little Halloween adjacent. Yeah, no, this is for sure a Halloween movie. This is Halloween? Okay, because oh I didn't God, realize yes. it was. We're doing. We're talking about Kiki's Delivery Service, a, another Miyazaki classic. We christened your Miyazaki <laughs> experience with, with Spirited Away, and yes. you loved it so much, we decided to come back for more. And it, it didn't occur to me until I was watching it. I'm like, all right, this is a witch movie. Yeah. This is like, okay, first of all, I did not know this was made in 1989. Yeah. This was, I feel like, had to be the start of so many iconic witch isms that were followed later with like American media of what witches represent. But I feel like this was just a classic feel good witch coming of age allegory for 75 million things, which I'll talk about later. But it just, it's a Halloween feel good, get your fall clothes out, have a pumpkin spiced something. And watch it with your pals. It this movie is a warm hug. Ooh. It it made me feel pleasant. Mm. Uh, I mean, this is this is the beginning of the Miyazaki explosion. I believe this was back to back with my neighbor Totoro. So this was like welcome to the fucking scene. Mm. Uh, and and even I mean, the first shot of this movie, mm-hmm. you have young Kiki hanging out on a windy hill Ugh. and the breeze is whipping dog whipping through her hair whipping through the grass the way that they capture uh like sci-fi core like um aesthetic <laughs> with or like fantastical aesthetic with realism yeah is what makes these so cozy because you're like oh my god she's a witch and like that hill looks so sparkly and magical. And then she's like eating food that we eat and has like a regular looking house and regular looking things. And I just think that that's what's so special about this is it just hits like the fantastical perfectly on the head to then marry it with like real girl problems. There, This is one of the movies that I feel like a lot of our audience, y- you remember it from childhood uh, I know Maggie, like, she's like, I I don't know how many times I've seen this movie. What? It's just like, it was just like in her, the recesses of her memory. Wait, what? Yeah. Where were people watching this? Rainy, had you seen it? Oh, yeah. Well, I watched this at like, I, also, like, I couldn't say anything about it, but it's like deep in my bones. Wait, do you remember how you saw it? Oh, yeah. It was in my, uh, like, VCR. <gasps> yeah. I feel robbed once again. I don't know who I got to yeah, yell at. My beautiful parents, childhood memory. my culture, mm-hmm. that I've never seen this. I To me, this is like the ultimate vibes movie because mm. there is a plot and there is deep like uh, emotionality and allegories. But for the most part, I don't really care about the plot. <laughs> you just care about cottage core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like it takes place in a vague European city oh. that I would like to move to. Dog, the way I tried to figure out what this city was, I was like, <laughs> it's Venice. No, it's Croatia. Where is this place? Oh, it's so dreamy. It, it, like every frame is a meal. It really is. And there are times where like they know they're like, uh, there's like they border Almost occasionally on being gratuitous in some moments. Oh, yeah. And you're like, no, but give me more. Yeah. And like the silence was so surprising how much silence they had. And I fucking movie. loved it. Yeah. There, there's a, especially the climax has like no scoring for a lot of it. Oh, and yeah. And you hear whoosh, wind, yes. but then even more, they cut the wind out. And now it's just <gasps> quiet. Silence. And you're like, ah! You truly, they have a really unique way of building anticipation for a really kind of low stakes <laughs> environment. And that's what I like about it is it's a movie about a witch, mm-hmm. but it just feels like a slice of life character follow. A little slice of pie. Oh, 
Young Kiki is a 13-year-old witch. She's not having a bat mitzvah. She's going on her witch Witch mitzvah. Witch in year? Witch. Uh, What is, um, like, a... Gap year for your 13-year-old self? Amish people go on rumspringa, but instead of doing drugs and and fucking for a year, she's going to go train to be a witch. Wait, I'm sorry. You don't know rumspringa? No. You don't know Rumspringa? Stop saying it like that. What is that? Rainy, do you know Rumspringa? No, I don't know what that is. Oh my God, Please enlighten us. Well, I believe when uh, uh, the Amish turn 18, they have a year or maybe it's a month. It's called Rumspringa. And you go and you fucking party hard. I can't get over the fact that it's called Rumspringa and not Rumspringer because I just feel like you're trying to make this a word that doesn't exist. I and what do you look- mean they give you a year? Do you have to come? What if you don't want to come back? What if you get okay, deep Okay, I'm looking heroin? it up just to make sure I got this right. Rumspringa, which is, <laughs> I hate uh, this. Uh, is a rite of passage during adolescence translated uh, from German, blah, 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 blah. Uh, means jumping and hopping around used in some Amish communities. Uh, Rumspringa normally begins at 16 and ends when a youth chooses either to be baptized or leave the community. <gasps> so like- You okay. have a choice. So so you're, you're, I don't know, we've fallen so, we've I strayed so far. I don't know, this so kind far. of goes to what's happening with our girl. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, in Amish communities, when you turn 16, like you've like been living traditionally and now it's like, hey, go taste- Go taste sin. <gasps> go, go see but the sin modern. Tastes so good. I don't think it's. I don't think it's actually about drugs. I think it's more about like go, like go into modern society and like go see nuts. How scary it is. And now decide either to take that forever or come back to us. What a fucking year that must be for your mother. <laughs> think about your mom. Just like once he gets his dick sucked, it's over for us. <laughs> He's never coming home. He's gonna choose the streets over our Especially family. Especially at sixteen years old. Yeah, at least eighteen. You've got a little bit more wits about you. You, you know, popped your first boner, hopefully. But I feel like, man, sixteen. Ri- I shouldn't have even been let out at sixteen. I must be. I must have an incorrect um, knowledge of this. I bet you. Like I'm saying, it's about like, like doing drugs and fucking and I bet you it's more like like go get a job or like go uh, stay out and have a beer any Amish people in the comments leave us uh, some instruction well, below they, they wouldn't be <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do feel like weirdly this is kind of tied to our movie because our girl Kiki starts in such a classic small countryside town right where she's She's just who she is, which is what I love. She's not she's not quiet. She's not afraid. She's very brave. She's loud for this little community. And she fucking knows. She's been preparing her whole life for this year, this gap year, where I guess at 13 you go and you practice your witching skills and you figure out what you're going to be good at. And our girl is ready to go do that. And then she picks a town, which happens to be the hustling, bustling Lisbon, Vaguely European p- city, Paris, Cisco. Which... Yeah, so it's it's uh there's lots of themes of traditionalism versus mm. modernity. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, you nailed it. At 13, our young Kiki goes off 13 to study a year in witch training. Yeah, she arrives in the city of her dreams after a uh, broomstick flight across the countryside. <laughs> um. And where I, I'm getting distracted from the plot as well because she meets this one girl who's like the ultimate popular cool girl who's like, that's my city. It may seem big to you, but to me, it's no big deal. And she's I remember when I like, was a loser like yes. you. Yes, she's got the coolest outfit on. She's riding her broomstick like she just doesn't give a fuck. Like she is giving like goals. And Kiki's like, man, what a bitch. <laughs> I want to. Beer. Yeah, but she sees like, oh, wow, this is what I could be like. But then our girl tells her like, no, it's pretty hard going into a brand new town where you don't know anyone or anything. But I'm a fortune teller, so I pretty much can do anything because I can see the future. And Kiki's How like, not come back. She was so rude. I know. <laughs> she was so mean. But she was so iconic. Like, I kind of want to get a tattoo of her. Um. So we have, uh, okay, let me finish the synopsis oh, really yeah. quick. That's important. I, I, so Kiki lands in our European city. She's accompanied by her talking cat, Joji. Gigi. We, Gigi. We stand. Joji is the TikTok singer. Thank oh, you for the correction. Okay. Uh, and uh, she starts a delivery service 
She's not very good at it. <laughs> uh, and that is essentially Kiki's journey. She meets a boy, the young Tombo, who is obviously me. Yeah. Uh, a, li- a little glasses dork <laughs> yep. who is so thirsty for her love. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, you've got little misadventures of Kiki getting along with the community, struggling with uh, sadness and her identity and place identity, in the world. Is loss she a of good magic, witch? All of that. We're gonna dive into yes. it. The first thing that that I really kind of loved about this was the uh, sort of blase attitude it had towards magic, mm. and, and, or just like the matter of factness. I guess is a better yeah. way to say it. So you know, first of all, we just yeah, Kiki's a witch, right? Witches she lives exist. in this small community. There's a talking cat. Yeah, that's just the given. But she gets into this hustling, bustling city, city which by all measures is modern. Mm-hmm. It's got, you know, Upgraded cars tech. And, yeah. And people are like, oh, cool, a witch. They're like, wow, a witch. And I'm like, what? But it's like, gee willikers, <laughs> haven't seen one of those in a while. Yeah, like how lucky are we? Our city got a witch, a little girl witch. It's like if we saw a buffalo. Like I know they exist in America still, but they're like, oh, that's rare. Yeah, you ever been to Catalina Island? Yeah, They'd and be I was walking around all the time. And I was there. like, "Oh, there's a buffalo." Gee Willikers. Yeah, they're fucking huge. They're, they're very big scary. I saw a lot of them in Yosemite, or not yeah. Yosemite. What's the other? Yellowstone. There's yeah. a lot of them in Yellowstone. Um, but yeah, the way that they just portray magic, like when she goes first to just tell her mom, like, "Mom, I'm doing my gap year starting tonight," and her mom's like mixing potions, and like I'm like, <laughs> "Oh, her mom's just a bad bitch witch." Like. Okay, here she goes. And their whole thing about witchdom, which I thought was kind of fun, was like they go on this gap year to figure out what their skill is. Yes. Like what is the thing they're good at? And Kiki's like, I don't know. I don't have one. That's like literally how she talks in the whole movie. She's like, I don't know who I am or what I'm good at. I guess I'm good at flying, which, spoiler, you guys. <laughs> This whole movie is about this bitch realizing she could be a delivery service witch and that's her thing is to help people. She is terrible at flying a broom. <laughs> this girl is, she should not have a broom and license. She should be grounded, literally. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, you know that one friend who every time they drive, you kind of like your your finger, your, you claw the seat? Yeah. I I ain't going to get coffee with Kiki. I'm not ordering shit from her. Oh my God, Kiki! You are not, my <laughs> my DoorDash meal would be Mm-mm. all jumbled and oh shook up. Oh my God! It dropped in the woods. A cat shows up on my doorstep. That would actually be kind of cool. But seriously, she is terrible at the one thing she sets out to be in and, this movie. And let's be clear: very easy deliveries. Oh yeah. This is not. It's just, hey, Kiki, can you drop off a toy? A package. She drops the toy into a forest of crows. And <laughs> she's like, man. I thought crows and witches were supposed to be friends. And she's like, nah, that's an old wives tale. Crow, crows don't follow us anymore. We don't own animals like that. I she like says that. as she owns a talking cat in her backpack. Uh, another thing with the depiction of magic that I loved, we talked about the wind. And when she's ready to fly, <gasps> she's on her broom. And you see the wind pick up her hair yeah. before she levitates. It's like the, like, her hair starts to float yeah. and then she starts flying and ooh, every time it yeah. just filled me with like the 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 Halloween spoopy heebie-jeebies in the yes. best way. And I'm going to just say it because I can say this because I'm a woman. Girl, your panties <laughs> are out this whole movie. Like your britches, you are 13. Okay, I was like starting to experiment with thongs at 13. You know what I'm saying? Like she... I do know what y'all saying. She got to put on some some Sophie's under that that thing because her ass just be out because every time she gears up on her broom, same thing happens. Her dress flies up and I'm like, honey, yeah, leave no, a little for the mystery. Yeah. Tombo was definitely sneaking some peeks. Oh, for sure. And they were they were large and in charge. Uh, this is obviously those. we're doing Miyazaki. This is pure pleasure. But I will say there is just the occasional guilt Ooh. where there were like a few random ass lines that uh that like were sexualizing in a way that I was like, what's going on here? I didn't hear it. Um, I'm too pure. Uh, <laughs> she says with <laughs> ride to her hair. <laughs> uh, I <laughs> literally. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I had a late night and I didn't have time this morning to shower, and there's just this tiniest littlest bit in my hair of. <laughs> you have tried. <laughs> I know. It's Halloween. What does that have to 
to do with anything. You know, spooky spider webs. <laughs> Some thoughts are, are thoughts we keep to ourselves. Me? Never. I've never kept a thought to myself, Zachary. What do you do? Um, you just have to shampoo? Yeah, well, I should. I, I imagine it's just water like, soluble. Yeah, yeah. It just was a little crusty. I would, that's why I threw on the hat. Mm -hmm. But this weekend, this a children's movie. <laughs> I went to a sex party, and uh -huh. uh, my first one since I've been like single, single in a bit. And I slept with the oldest person I've slept with. How old? She, she was forty six, and she was hot as shit. Yeah, yeah. We're back talking to about uh, <laughs> Kiki's delivery service, yes. a children's movie. Um, there was, God damn it. Well, Use the sexualizing lines. That's yeah. how we got there. Well, See, there I just, know I didn't just insert it myself. Someone else in the last night, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there was one random line where, uh, I just wrote this down, so I don't even know who says what, but she says, wants to do a drawing with me? And then <gasps> Gigi goes, naked? naked? I did and she goes, Gigi, one. jail. Straight to jail. Yeah. Miyazaki, you're going to jail. That is a joke about drawing a 13-year-old girl naked. Yeah. What are you talking about? But but Gigi was, let's be real, the voice of the inner monologue. She he was he was the devil on her shoulder. He was like the little nasty voice. The little, ooh, do the bad thing boy. Well, and he's horny as hell for the cat next door. So horny. Uh I feel like I am always running behind. I'm always low on time. There are never enough hours in the day. And with all of that, I don't know how I'm expected to uh, cook for myself, to go shopping. If you are like me, Dash Pass is the one membership you need to get the most out of DoorDash and everyday life. Dash Pass members get $0 delivery fees and up to 10% off eligible DoorDash orders, including groceries, drinks, personal care items, and more. Dash Pass makes delivery even more worth it helping their members save more than $35 per month on average. Plus, Dash Pass delivers way more than just tonight's dinner, including special access to experiences, promotions, and Dash Pass exclusive menu items. All of that for only $9.99 a month. Sign up for Dash Pass now and you'll get your first month free. Put a little joy back into your schedule. Sign up for Dash Pass today. Use code GUILTY and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more. After signing up for Dash Pass, subject to change, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass with code GUILTY. Subject to change, terms apply. Sign up for more. Become a Dash Pass member today. Then okay, then there was also so 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 Kiki makes a friend in the middle of the forest. Mm -hmm. There's this like older Her name woman. Name is Ursula. No kidding. Yes, which I thought was hilarious. And there are these two back to back lines where like, well, first of all, she keeps talking about how beautiful Kiki is, which like I'm sure is like a translation thing where I'm mm -hmm. like, this seems a little weird. Mm -hmm. But then they're trying to hitchhike at one point, and she says something about like, we're both so hot, yeah. everyone's gonna want to pick us up, and then yeah. they get picked up and. The 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 driver's like, I thought you were a boy by the way you were dressed, which I'm like, first of all, not to be that weird guy, but the artists uh, they illustrated her, her with heavy naturals. They gave her some cans. They gave her. And I'm like, in what world? Can we just break down Ursula, though, for a minute? Yeah, she. Yeah, because she's bad as hell. Yeah, she bad. She is giving hey, she cottage, hangs out with crow. core, cottage core, hanging East out with crows, side, living in the forest. She painter extraordinaire. She is one with her art. She talks to the crows like pandemic me was trying to be Ursula. Like, you know, she has armpit hair. She <laughs> fucking hates men. She's gay as hell. Like, but she gives such sage advice. And I really think she was like what Kiki needed for her future self almost like the bigger sister you need to come like snap you out of the depression and say like, hey, we all need a break sometimes. We all can't always be good at everything. And she gives her some like good advice. I really liked her. She felt like the ultimate big sister. Yes. And especially because this is a a coming of age movie. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about, so there's tradition versus modernity. There's childhood versus adulthood. There is the like innocence versus, I suppose, mm -hmm. not really the loss of innocence, but like the jadedness. Well, it's like burnout culture. Yeah. It was like really millennial for me. That's it was optimism like, versus yeah. uh, uh, 
I don't know, nihilism. Like <laughs> only 10% of art majors actually make a living doing art. And I was like, girl, mm. Kiki, you got to get a side job. Like this is her hustle culture. You know what I mean? And Ursula really represented like coming back to your passions. Like Kiki was trying to like grind out like Gary V videos. Yes. And, <laughs> and was like, I am going to get that coin. And then she even says it at one point. She's like, man, I really hate flying now that I've made it my job. And Dude. I was like, the way, Oof. That line cut so deep to my core. It's like the thing that she loved more than anything became her profession and now she's lost her sparkle. And she literally had to find a way to monetize her talent. And it became, she became burnout culture. She couldn't do it anymore. She literally, and this is where I thought, okay, maybe it's also a little bit of a metaphor for like erectile dysfunction. Oh, you know, like, <laughs> oh, you're, I wasn't you're, getting that. You're just using it. You're glad to have it. You're, you're full of it when you're at that age. You're just slanging left and right. But then as soon as you start doing it to appease other people, <laughs> you start to lose your spark, your shine, your sparkle. There's and then not a fucking you're thinking, you you're too in your head about it. You can't get a boner when you're just thinking about making sure you get a boner. It's literally her on her broom trying to fly and she's like why can't I get hard and then she finally it's only when someone she loves and needs to save them can she pop a pop a willy you are telling me that you think you think that Kiki's delivery service is an allegory for erectile dysfunction I know it is I just told you it was well there's our TikTok of the week <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it you makes sense you know I rock with you. And Same message. I, I will ride. You know I will ride for the craziest of metaphors. Yes. And I'm, the, and yeah, I'm here for this that's one. That's what I thought. Because it really is about like getting out of your head and into your body. They even teach like uh, Ursula teaches Kiki about mindfulness. She's like, when you feel burnt out and you hate your fucking job and it used to be the thing you love, go for a walk. Take a nap past noon. Pop a Viagra. Pop a fucking, just watch porn for fun with no <laughs> end goal. You know, just do it to feel good. That's what they teach you when you like can't get hard anymore. They're like, don't make it the focus is getting hard. Just make it feeling good. I got to rewatch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm missed just all saying. This. And I think that that's really good advice. And in our millennial culture, that's been trained to be like, you're, Millennials really do want jobs that make them feel good, not make them money. But mm. we are so trained to be like, you have to exist in culture a certain way with a certain number. And I think it, it like weirdly was uh, ahead of its time. This movie is a really apt depiction of depression. Mm. And on, I didn't, hearing you talk about it now, I'm realizing more about how it depicts being burnt out mm -hmm. and your job kind of grinding you down, mm -hmm. which I imagine Miyazaki put a lot of himself as an artist, right? Where you he makes art and tells stories because he loves it, but now that become, you get entered into this machine that becomes your profession. And I imagine there were a lot of conflicted feelings about that. Mm -hmm. for, for me watching it, I, I was really shocked at the maturity with which they depicted depression mm -hmm. for a children's movie. Oh, yeah. So... Kiki just, she starts self-sabotaging. She doesn't feel like she fits in anywhere. She she is sad, and she's sad just because she's sad. Mm -hmm. And there's one point where, so Tombo, uh, who is just so sweet and just wants to be her friend and wants to be a little more than a friend. And obsessed with airplanes. That's an important detail. Loves airplanes. But he, like, at one point, like, invites Kiki over to meet all the friends. Yeah. And she just goes, no, I don't want to. Yeah. And she does want to. Yeah. She wants to fit in. Uh -huh. But I related so hard to that of like sometimes your depression takes over and you do things against what will make you feel good. She says you it. Can't. Like the very next scene after that moment, you say she's like literally laying on the floor talking to Gigi and she's like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I want to make friends and I meet all these new people and then I can't bear to be around them. And it's like, whoa, it's that same feeling of I want to be invited, but I don't want to go. Yeah. It's like she doesn't fit in, but she just wants to know people want her around. And then she literally becomes bedridden. What's so crazy, too, is that this is the last 30 minutes of the movie. I, 
I, it really did. It shocked me. It, this it, is an hour 44. Yeah. And so the first like whole stretch of the movie is like Kiki sucks at delivery. Yeah. <laughs> Kiki's, that's the whole time. That's the whole thing. She and never then, gets better. And then in Act Three, it's like, whoosh. <laughs> actually, this is about depression, messaging, and burnout. Yes. And it's like, I, I was watching. I'm like, holy shit, new movie it alert! It really came out of nowhere. Yeah, but I loved it, and it, it was so heartbreaking mm. to see this spirit crushed. And then what really broke me? Oh. Okay, so Gigi, the, the oh, talking cat. God. So who's you know, he's like the wise Alex, smart, you know, yeah. he's cracking jokes. And then at one when when Kiki gets depressed, he goes from talking like this to first going meow meow. Meow meow. And then in the next scene he comes in and it's meow. He's full meow. kitty. And she's oh, like Oh, Rainy looks so crushed. And and from that point of the movie forward, she Gigi, never talks to her cat again. Gigi just fades away from the talking character. To a cat. Which that was my one guilt. Because the the moment that that happens is when she realizes she's depressed and yes. she's losing her powers. She can't get on a broom. She can't fly. Can't she starts get getting erectile dysfunction. And she can't communicate with her cat who before they could talk to each other like humans. And so when she realizes that, you're like, oh my God, finally when she gets her powers back, she'll be able to talk to Gigi. Yeah. But then in the end, it's so crushing because- no. Gigi, Gigi never comes back. Never comes back. I did read about this on a fun fact. And Tell me. it's supposed I read to it be, too, yeah. yeah. Oh, you you say it. What is no, it? go ahead. Oh, well, it's just that it's not about um, her losing her powers. It's about her growing up. But what? And I disagree. Yeah, but that, I also, talking to her cat is such a grown yeah, thing. Miyazaki yeah. and someone else, I, one of the other people created the movie, they came out and basically said, like, this is her entering adulthood, and Gigi was a representation of, like, oh, herself. Oh, just a Jiminy Cricket that was supposed to help her just to... Oh. Well, and it's just, like, basically that when she's talking to Gigi, she's talking to herself. Yeah. And at that point, she no longer needs him. But that is not my experience of watching the movie. No. Because when you watch the movie, it's like, it's literally that moment of like, oh, you've you've lost it. You've yeah. lost all joy in the world. Your best friend is now just a, it's just a fucking cat. Oh. And it is such a good, so, like you feel it before mm. you realize it and before mm. the character realizes it. Because Gigi comes in and goes, meow, meow. Yeah. And you're like, the fuck are you, the fuck is that about? And then it's, meow. And you're like, Oh, shit. May I present you with this interpretation, Zachary? Okay, erectile dysfunction, pussycat. And maybe Gigi was never talking to her at all. That's what the artists say. That's that. Maybe they, that was just her imagining it, that's having what, a best right. imaginary friend. But then Gigi also stops talking when Gigi starts hitting the cat, the cat next door. Yeah. So there's something, too, with, like, the loss he of innocence. Matured. It's like once you realize that like sex is dope. That, once you realize sex is dope, then you no longer. He, he are, had his rum springer, and he never came home. There's one line that I wrote down because it was so stupid, uh, where Gigi sees the fluffy white cat next door and goes, "Pardon me, Miss Snooty Cat." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start saying that to girls at the bar. I think I hated Gigi. Oh, strong harsh words. I don't know. I can't blame him. You know what I mean? I just mean the voice. Like, I just oh. hated the, the perform. Like, Gigi's was supposed to make me laugh. And uh, the, the U.S. dub is, is Phil Hartman. Oh, and I, okay. I didn't do it for me. Didn't it also give Salem vibes, though? Like, well, Salem and Sabrina? Yeah. Uh, this movie makes birds as terrifying <gasps> as they deserve to be. So loud that my cats got scared. Really? I was watching this on my iPad this morning, and my cats... Kept running out As of the room. As the artist intended. <laughs> yes, because I was uh, late to realize that this was happening. It, it was so fucking loud. These birds ah! are like birds from the birds movie. Ah! They were so scary. Crows, seagulls, pecking at you up in the sky. Oh my God. Even at one point, she's flying alongside geese, geese before a gust of wind comes. And the geese aren't meant to be scary, but there's like this hyper realistic close up of them. Oh my god, I hate and, it. And that was also the first moment cuz I knew that like I was it was like oh this is a european ass city but they're all have japanese names. Maybe there is a european yeah. city that I'm just not aware of. And then I saw canadian geese and I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> this is a make believe <laughs> land. We ain't we ain't in japan. We ain't in japan anymore. Maybe yeah. there are geese in japan and I just don't know it. 
Wait, like, did this movie give scary? Because it is spooky Halloween. It's witch. It's coming of age. It didn't give me anything scary. Were you scared as a kid by any of the scenes? I don't think so. Yeah, no. I liked that, though. It also felt, like, stupidly wholesome. Yes. Like, there was not a mean bone in anybody's body about the characters. And it was almost, like, too wholesome to where I thought... Some of the side characters, like the pregnant baker who lets her in and the delivery people and those grandmas in the woods. Like, I thought at some point one of them was going to become evil villains or one of them was actually a witch. Like, there was a lot of winking going on. I'm curious if you were shocked by this. First of all, I did not realize that the baker was pregnant until the very end. Like, one of the last moments of the movie, she's like, oh, I'm giving birth. And I'm like, what? what? You just thought she was a big baker lady. I didn't even notice it at all. I thought she was just a baker. She does say at one point, because I'm pregnant, you can help me with deliveries. Well, there you go. Uh, she also has this, like, big silent himbo working with her. <laughs> oh, my God. Never speaks a word. And I had no idea that that was her, her baby daddy. <laughs> oh, my God. This is how I want to see men represented in movies. Quiet. <laughs> and and just like... Working. Big and ready. Uh, oh, my God. And fucking. Wait, can we talk about the dad? The dad character the beginning of the movie. So sweet. so sweet. Miyazaki loves doing these just like pathetic sweet men. Yeah. Real and real beta bitches. Real beta. But like honestly, that's the best it. dad. Yeah. Oh. His number one job was being a dad. Yeah. And he's clumsy. But then there's this before Kiki goes off on her adventure, there's this sweet shot where she goes, Can you carry me like you did when I was a little kid? And he really struggles for a second. <laughs> and 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 then you have this wide shot of him like cradling her in his arms and she's like wrapped around his neck and it's so sweet. Yeah, but I was also like, hey man, that girl's like got her period. You okay. know, it, okay. she's too old for that shit. Put her down. Like we got to grow it up. It was sweet. Okay. How dare you? I don't know. Man, I was like, you're too old for that shit. You're going to hurt your dad's back. You know? Kelsey's like, you, fathers, get your daughter's love the old fashioned way. Yeah. By getting them the car from Tokyo Trip. Exactly. <laughs> none of, none of this none of physical this sweet, affection. No, I can't have that physical touch. Oh, wow. You just made me realize that's why physical touch is one of my favorite love languages. Because I didn't have it as a child. <laughs> Ayo. <laughs> wow. Can't wait to text my therapist later. <laughs> Uh, there's one little B story with Jeff the dog. So we talked oh, about yeah. um, uh, Kiki on one of her first deliveries. She drops G uh, a toy into the forest. And so Gigi needs to pretend to be a toy uh, dropped off to this snooty little kid who you may or may not recognize the voice. It was Pamela Adlin. Who that? Uh, she is one of the most prominent uh, voice actresses. She did Bobby from uh, King of the Hill. But she oh. also then had that show Better Things. Okay. Yep. I thought I recognized. It sounded like um, Phil and Lil from Rugrats. I think that also is her. Well, that checks yeah, out. She's done a, she's done everything. Um, but you have this little like side adventure B story. It's the only time that we leave Kiki in the whole movie. Yeah. And it's just to see this old dog mm -hmm. chilling, loving life. Yeah. I have nothing to add other than that. I love that dog. And that he and the kitty cat, were, we, they became friends. You think the dog's going to be... No bueno and eat the kitty cat, but they become friends. It's a wholesome. Can we talk about Tombo? Talk about Tombo. So he is this little <laughs> dorky boy who is horny Glasses, as hell. Blonde hair, striped shirt. Little red striped shirt. Yeah. Um, I appreciated his energy to like start. Like he's confident. He approaches a girl. He wants to be friends with her. He wants to say, hey, I'll be your friend. And then the part that got me was when he goes to invite her out on a date for the first night. And he's like, we're going to this club. I want to pick you up at seven. And I was like, all right, Tom Dude, Tomo I, fucks. And I then wrote he says, down this line. It is so fucking please fly. Read it. He, uh, Kiki's like, no, I'm no, no. You're saying it's fly. I think it's the coolest line I've ever heard in my life. No, no, no. Okay. Rainy, you will be impartial judge. I think this is, this, I think this is the Wait, most. Hold on. But let me present it to you. He says, we're going to the coolest club tonight. I'll pick you up at seven. And then he says. And, and Kiki's like, I'm not sure that I want to come. I think this is the most rizzed up line I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to come. And he goes, I hope you make up your mind by six because that's when I'll be by to pick you up. No, no, no. You're missing the most important part. That's fucking fly as hell. You're missing the most important part. What's the most important part? It is not a club. <laughs> it's a aviation kids club. Uh. That is the most unfuckable, <laughs> unsexy place to get it on with your new crush. He's like, you want to go to the club tonight? I'm like, all right, here we go. This is it. Here we go. And then he's like, we're going to go watch planes be built. And I'm like, oh, and we're down. We're back down to normal.
I hope you make up your mind by six because that's when I'll be by to pick you up. That was pretty good. <laughs> that's fly as fuck. Yeah, but not when he's taking you to an airplane club. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with that. I feel like it was false confidence. <laughs> They're also 13. Yeah, fair. Okay. <laughs> so. But this guy was like pre uh, uh, Franklin, what's his name? Lloyd Wright, what's his name? Delano Roosevelt. No, no, no. The airplane guys. Lloyd Brothers? Yes. And no, yes, right brothers, right the right brothers. brothers. Who are the Lloyd brothers? I don't know. You said Lloyd Wright, and I'm like, that's an architect. Is that and... isn't that his name, Franklin Lord Lloyd Wright? That's the architect, but oh. yeah. the Wright brothers are like Orvis or something. Aren't they the plane people? Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Okay. But the, there's an architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. Are we all oh. stupid? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, we've known that for a long time. I know, I know Frank Lloyd Wright. But He's a this part architect. was what made me realize that this movie actually takes place like in the 50s because planes have not been in. They've been invented. Planes were definitely invented in the 1950s. One, no, because one's like flying over them, but was it was the, like... The dirigible? Yes. They it, kept saying dirigible and it made me want to lose yes. my mind. And then also with the ovens that the grandmas are cooking in, they're like, we have this new fancy oven and it's like they're throwing out their wood burning stove oven. Which Honestly, was, that didn't even... I didn't connect to that at all and oh. that explains why all the music is 1950s. Yes. Like... Happy Days. It was surprising Japanese, to me, though. Which I loved. Yeah, I was like, oh, wait, yeah, because sh- there is no electronics in it the way there might be in the 80s. Well, and there, I mean, again, you have this movie. It's like classicism or, or, or traditionalism versus the Industrial Revolution yeah. versus modernity. And so you have, they keep saying dirigible, 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 dirigible. If you're wondering what that is, so was I. It's a blimp. <laughs> it's a fucking huge blimp. I don't know why. It's they... like a steam pump, steampunk blimp. I think it was just a blimp. Mm, it was huge. It was a big motherfucker. You've never seen a blimp that big in Blimps today's are big. time. Not that big. You know, there's like only, there's like yeah, 20 we've blimps said in this, the world. We have said this fact on this podcast it's cool. for the last like three episodes. It's, it's a wild. Fun. It's a good one. Okay. But yeah, it Dirigible. was It was showing that like that big technology was actually bad because spoiler alert, our boy Tombo gets stuck on the dirigible and gets carried across the town dangling by a rope. Dude, the action climax of this movie is dope yeah it's really thrilling yeah and we talked uh, uh, before about how they like suck the sound away Mm. but the way that it was animated of watching kiki like fucking i don't know what even verb to say just watching her through the town wind around really exciting wind is a character in this film Wit, honestly, yeah, 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 and they—I mean, Wind is the first character introduced and the last. Well, <laughs> yeah, but she basically this is the moment where she can finally pop a boner because she is not thinking about the pressure of making money off of being able to fly. She just needs to go save her friend slash future potential lover. You want to talk about a feel-good moment? Mm. It it fully breaks logic, but once. So, so Kiki, you know, Tombo is is hanging on for dear life. Everyone's watching. Everyone's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. The blimp, the dirigibles crashing. The news people are like, oh, my God. Kiki saves Tombo. The entire town Ugh. erupts in cheers and they go to catch him in a giant trampoline. But everyone immediately, the entire town starts throwing, throwing papers. confetti. And <laughs> confetti. And just it is a beautiful so shot. So obscenely joyous yeah and the music kicks in because yeah. we've been in silent for so long and then it's yeah da, 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 save the day da, 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 everyone's watching da, da, da. on tv cheering her on and, from all around oh it just like it's so simple yeah it was and, so saccharine that it yes. made like it made my tooth hurt because it was mm, so sweet nice It made me so, like, I felt uncomfortable with how happy I was. Yeah, like, I can't get over the fact that, like, I enjoyed this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Me. Freak of nature, freak of leek a deek. Really just loved a wholesome, good, aesthetic, feel-good time. Miss Snooty Cat over there. Ooh. How you doing, Miss Snooty Cat? (laughs) I'm going to start saying that, I'm telling you. I'm trying to think of some other little details. I mean, the animation is stunning. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's something that will always get me with a anime character's eyes welling with tears. Yeah. Right before they cry, they just kind of wiggle. <laughs> they just and, kinda... her little, and her little blush cheeks too, like wiggling. This is the most wholesome episode we've ever done. Yeah, it just, I don't, I don't know that there's much more to say this movie. Like this is, okay, next time it is raining, oh. put this on. 
It was foggy and cloudy this morning and I watched it in bed on my iPad with my cats and I was like, I'm peeking. And you know, I was thinking about like the aesthetics of Lo-Fi Girl that YouTube, like, yes. it's Kiki Core, right? Kiki Core. It is. There's, I mean, we just to go back, I, I was reading up a little bit. Um, so this is not my original thought, but that I keep saying the idea of traditionalism versus modernity. Mod modernity. Yep. Modernity, not the, yep. not the, not the vaccine. Vaccine. Um, but there, this movie does celebrate this idea of simple is good mm -hmm. and there is something i mean it's oversimplifying and over saying that traditionalism is always better but that there's something to be gained in remembering tradition and mm -hmm. living a simple life and not getting caught up in the grind culture mm -hmm. of modern life of the big no city no boss babes here no boss babes here mm -mm. sometimes you just got to get in touch <gasps> ooh can we talk about our our, our girl ursula mm -hmm. in the cabin mm -hmm. At one point, she Kiki goes back to her cabin mm -hmm. and sees a painting Ooh. that Ursula has made. Yeah, and it is like kind of dope. It's a transfixing moment. Yeah, because you see art within art. Yeah, and it's a different style. But it's, you see it as actual art. Like I didn't even realize that it was art within art. Art within, and it's a different art style yeah. than what's in the movie. And it's a really Good. beautiful yeah. piece of art. And and like. The movie knows it too, and so it like slowly pushes in on it Examines with this like it. kind of uh, whimsy music. The, yeah, the music is like um, transfixing, and it's mm -hmm. just like you, you're drawn in it. The, the art had a real power to it. Mm -hmm. You want to hit some fun facts? I would love nothing more. I'm excited to actually hear these fun facts. Is what could be what else? The movie itself is a whole fun fact. As we were talking about, where the hell does this movie take place? During pre-production, Hayao Miyazaki and his artists did travel to Sweden <gasps> for research. Uh, the photographs they took of Stockholm and Visby, they uh, formed the basis for this fictional town mm -hmm. of Corico. Oh, um, And as we talked about, they also brought in elements of Lisbon, mm -hmm. Paris, San Francisco, yep. and Milan. I believe so, it. So unfortunately, the answer is uh, if you want to visit this place, you can't. you can't. But Lisbon is pretty like this. I'm not going to lie. Like, that's one of my favorite cities in the world. And... Portugal really be that girl. Oh, this is cool. Okay. So this is uh, an alternate 1950s Europe where World War One and Two never <gasps> happened. Aww, we love to see it. Just humans loving humans. See, this movie's too goddamn wholesome. Yeah, he uh, Miyazaki has been quoted as saying that the fictional city of Kokoro, uh, wait, is it Kariko or Kokoro? I don't know. Uh, uh, has one side on the shores of the Mediterranean, on the and the other on the Baltic Sea. Aww, trying to be like Greece. Uh, I loved this too. He um, didn't want to bore the audience during the film's end credits by using just the names. Oh so, yeah. So uh, he's it's this mini sequel, uh, so the audience would leave the cinema feeling happy. Yeah. So uh, the whole end, like the movie, just ends. Yeah. And then gives you like here's, here's what happened after everything next. So you see uh, Kiki Tombo and with Kiki friends. hanging out, having fun. She's flying. Did you watch to the very end of the credits? Yeah. Mom and dad get a letter from Kiki. Yes. It, it Her did. business is on and thriving. And it's like a three minute credit sequence, which is the way every credit sequence yes, should be. Yes, I really enjoyed it. Oh, and this is funny. So um, Disney handled all the re-releases of, of the Miyazaki films in the U.S. Uh, so the dialogue during the scene where Kiki... Uh, She's in the U.S. version. She's drinking hot chocolate. Originally, it was coffee. Oh. <laughs> and Disney changed it because they thought it was inappropriate for children to drink coffee. Dude, I don't know when I missed this, like, trend, but teenagers drinking coffee, that was not a fucking thing when I was growing up. Are teenagers up. drinking coffee? Yeah. Like, obsessed with Starbucks. Don't you didn't it. drink coffee when you were a teenager? No. I didn't drink coffee until I graduated college. Yeah, I was 30. What? Yeah, I didn't like the taste of coffee. Oh, I started 30. drinking in high school. That's in year. high school? Dude, they go before school and they like what? get coffee together. Wait, what? What? Yes. Yeah, I was so tired. Teens have are... some juice. <laughs> yeah, have a healthy breakfast. <laughs> have some yogurt. Yeah. Yeah. And an OJ. Have yeah. some... <laughs> like the rest of us did. Have some Activia. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that wild? Wait, that's blowing my mind. You I had know. coffee in high school? Like every morning. 
it was so wild. I see them walking around all the time too with it. And I'm just like, stop drinking all that caffeine so young. Is it bad? Here's it's, the thing. It doesn't matter when you young? start because it's going to break you regardless. I, I, I stopped. I didn't drink coffee all through college. I would drink a, a, a naked juice in the morning if I needed a little, <laughs> a little pick me up. Uh, if I wanted to stay up all night to write a paper, I would have a quarter of a Red Bull and be like, I'm typing so fast. Oh, yeah. No, we were very, I was doing drugs. It, well, yeah. right. Sure. Most yeah. of my friends were, but I was. I was doing drugs before I drank coffee, before the drug of caffeine. That's so funny. <laughs> I, know. I guess same, actually. Yeah. yeah. And then once I graduated college, I was working as a PA on overnight oh, shoots. Oh, yeah. There and it is. I didn't even need it then, but there was one shoot that I was on as a Super Bowl commercial and they had... Like they brought a barista to set Ooh. and I had some free time and I, I, it was like, I, I literally went up to him and be like, I feel like a dork because I don't drink coffee. Can you like give me something, me something that will make me like it? And so oh, I was, what do you make you? Uh, like a vanilla latte. latte? Hell yeah. The classic. <laughs> and, and you can't go wrong. And I loved doing. it. Yeah, and, did. but like. That is so, I think about that moment and I wish I could like Marty McFly, like, go be back. Like, Zach, stop. Like, I didn't need out of the hand. caffeine. <laughs> I was fine. Yeah. But then once you, you start that drug. I support really Disney's bad, decision. Though? It's not. That, it's, caffeine at that age to start like wiring your brain to rely on a bad? stimulant. Or like, is it bad for like dr drinking coffee Developmental? now? Developmental? I don't and know. And also it fucks with your sleep at that age. You're already um, in like a hormonal imbalance. It's, I don't yeah. think it's. Good. Or I, now, even though, like, I today. can't come. I have no fucking idea. I just know that, like, in now, general, if you fucked, don't yeah. need a drug, yeah. <laughs> don't take it. Yeah. Right? That's like, a good point. Yeah. It's, it's where I'm super dependent on this stimulant now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't fly my broom no. without it. See what I'm saying? Now's the time where we talk about <laughs> what we're enjoying, watching, we're gonna reading, call this a pleasure. listening. My we're we're oh, calling the movie pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a delight. It's not yeah. my favorite Miyazaki, but it's no. all. It, this one, I said it up top. It's the ultimate vibes movie. Yes. It just like, I honestly didn't even care about anything that was yes. happening in it. Like, I can, you can read it deep if you want to, but I don't think you have to. And you just, just let it wash over you. Fun fact I forgot to add. This is based on a book where Ooh. apparently the third act is like completely different. Yes. Yeah. The everything with the dirigible was added <laughs> for word. this movie. Yeah. Um, God, if I have to hear dirigible one, one more time, time, I'm gonna. You, you're the one that keeps saying it. Now's the time where we talk about the things that we are enjoying in our real life. We are reading, watching, playing, doing. We call this my pleasures. Zach, what are you enjoying right now? Pass. <laughs> <laughs> I have something. I have something fucking major. Are you ready for this, guilty whores? I don't think you're ready for this, Jelly. I'm in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, they knew that. They expected that from me. Um, Do you want your hair to shine with the beautiful luster? <laughs> for step one. <laughs> um, I watch horror movies now. I watch scary movies and I fucking like them. I like them and I applaud them and I enjoy the cinematic art of horror films. Wait, this is a Halloween miracle. This, I truly, what, what happened? I'm going to tell you right now what happened. You watched me and Garrick be little bitches. No, you, you know what happened that day, though, that we watched it? I had this, like, switch go off in my brain about I was going through the breakup at that time. I would, like, had just been coming out of it. And that day, something switched during a meditation I was doing and about losing fear and like being afraid and doing it anyway. And that day I went and I dropped my ex's shit off at his house. I unfollowed him on social media. I fucking what, went and watched, talked to me. And I literally that day was like, today is the day I am reprogramming patterns. Wow. And I, from that day for the next like three nights, watched scary movies back to back to back. This and is, now I like them. This is exhilarating. I mean, look, this is a great, okay, it's Halloween, so we can talk about the joy of a good scary movie. And I love horror movies so much for so many reasons. We don't have nearly enough time to cover it. It taps into uh, your fears, into your id, into the, the things that you try to hide away. It is such a great cinematic metaphor machine yeah. where you can... In, you know, look, we, we've talked about how zombies are can be metaphors for a capitalist, capitalist society. Yeah. We've talked about how, I mean, so many horror movies are metaphors for your deepest unconscious fears. Mm -hmm. um, 
but they're also roller coaster rides. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think I'm ready to go watch one in a theater yet. <laughs> that I'm not. I need the comfort of my home with a blankie, maybe a tall, nice gentleman to hold on to, the lights on. Can I tell snackies. you why a theater is so much fun? Oh. Because that collective experience and your turns a lot of them into comedies. Ah. I think that the line between slapstick and horror is very thin. Yeah. And this is a very specific type of horror movie, but the the thrill of hearing screams and oh fuck no. Oh, and yeah. then you hear pockets of laughter. It yeah. is it's tension release, tension release. Yeah. It's the same uh setup as as comedy punchlines. Oh, that's a good point. I I I think I could enjoy a modern spooky I have not dipped into the classic horrors yet cuz I don't think I'm re- I'm taking it one step at a time. The Shining? Absolutely not. It's not that scary. It's the, it's great. Childhood trauma. <laughs> I get, hey, I get My it. My sister chasing me around the house screaming red rum. <laughs> it's too obscure, but I, I'm finding my genre. Okay, well, I'll give a... For anyone who doesn't think that horror is for them, uh, a recommendation, and do not watch this without me because we Maggie will want to watch it again. It's literally Maggie's favorite movie ever. Eugene made us watch it because he was like, what is a horror film that you will fuck with? The Orphanage. It is oh, a okay. uh, Spanish language film. Okay. Um, I think Guillermo del Toro produced. Ooh, we love him. And it is a horror movie that will make you cry. Ooh, okay. Well, I'm coming over this week. That is like, it has a a twist that is like so emotionally devastating. I want twists. Give me twists. Yeah. The give orphanage. me some good. Because I like thrillers. So if you can give me a good story with a twist at the end of horror, leave it in the comments below. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah. Well, uh, this is what you expected from a Kiki's Delivery Service episode. We talked about <laughs> uh, boners and uh, the scariest movies we could think of. Amen. Um, we're round. We're well-rounded podcast. What are you being for Halloween? Uh, I think an, a sexy alien. I was a slutty skeleton this past weekend. It was fun. I had like stockings and then- Weren't nipple- you a sexy alien last year? I was, I was a space cowboy last year. <laughs> <laughs> Big fucking difference. I am now the hunted, not the huntee. Uh, yeah, and I had nipple stickers that were little skeleton hands like this, so it looked like a little skeleton was holding my tits. It was very fun. Mm-hmm. What are you being? I am uh, getting a old-timey prisoner's costume and dying it pink. I'm Paddington in jail. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, the prison experiment, but that's cute, too. Paddington in prison. I and I it. told this... Oh, I, I can't start this. I said, I said this yesterday, and Rainy oh, went, yeah. oh... And I went, what do you mean, oh? And she's like, mm, I didn't like Paddington. And we went, what do you mean? <gasps> oh, like, rainy. I can't honestly cut this out. Is that out the I first can't, time you said even, that? I can't even put in this, this office. I, no, it's like, it's honestly, it We're would gonna, be. We're going to, no, why did you tell me that just now? I know, because I don't want to turn the audience against her. <laughs> I and can't. And she said she only watched like 15 minutes and then got bored. Oh, and, well, that explains. Okay, so there's And so then low. they made a point to be like, I'm just going to never watch it. And it's, <laughs> I want, I want the people to like you. <gasps> Thank and you, Zach. So we're just gonna go ahead and and cut this. Like that we're just gonna please. fucking cut this. Are uh, you are you using they them pronouns? What? What? No. No. Oh. You said and then they decided. Oh, I, they oh mean it was the office. yeah. That, that oh, was more I was like, like, like oh, really? Oh, Congrats <laughs> and thanks for fucking telling me. Uh, very cool. So I'm doing Paddington in prison. Maggie's gonna be classic Paddington, Aww. and then Bowie is gonna be Aunt Lucy. <laughs> Which is not, it, it, this is, I'm usually against couples costumes. No, but this sucks. But uh, <laughs> when Ma- so Maggie first got an old lady costume for Bowie, and I'm like, that's so funny. Then she said she was going to dress as Paddington, oh, just on her own. Perfect. And I was like, oh, Aunt Lucy, they're done, foo. And you then, could also be just one of the, the prisoners. Nah, like, I want to be pr- okay. padding- prisoner Paddington. It's okay. so much funnier. <laughs> oh, this is good too. So Maggie went on Amazon and bought a, a jar of marmalade <gasps> for us to carry around, but then it came. Well, we saw the price and we're like, Maggie, it's like 80 cents. That's going to be. And what it was is, you know, at like a diner at IHOP, the little like side. Yeah. Jelly jam. <laughs> so it's, it's that big. It's like a thimble of marmalade. <laughs> oh, you just made me hungry. Yeah. That's I'm good. ready for a sandwich. Well, we hope you enjoy your Halloween. Go trick or treating. Get spoopy. Uh, let us know what you're dressing us for Halloween. I'm curious. Yeah. And tell us what Thanksgiving films we should be looking into <laughs> yeah, next month. You Actually, you know what? Totoro is kind of Thanksgiving. Oh, core. is it? Okay. It, good it makes know. me think of Thanksgiving. I don't know why. Because maybe just like harvest. Okay. Anyway, I'm at Corn and all things. I'm Kelsey Darren and all the things. And, and I'm until. Kidding,
and all the things. And until next time. Geeky, do you, you love, love me? me? Are, Are you, you riding, riding your broom? Can you trust me? No, because you're a bad fucking flyer. <laughs> <laughs>